Hello everybody, welcome to part two of our critical limb ischemia uh, CLIglobal.com presentation. In part one, we went through the complex revascularization of the left lower extremity using, utilizing the modified Schmidt technique and we managed to achieve one vessel runoff via the posterior tibial artery. Uh, if you notice, uh, the last image of part one, we lost flow to the anterior tibial artery. In part two, I would like to discuss the options of revascularization what did we decide to do? How did we reach the, the, the decision to uh, uh, continue with revascularization for this patient? And what technical steps we took to, to achieve our ultimate goal? We hope you enjoy this demonstration. So these are the treatment options. Are we done with our revascularization? Should we monitor the wound and intervene? Or should we treat the anterior tibia artery? Now I remind everybody that uh, this patient had a wound that involved a distribution of the anterior tibia artery. Also, this patient had rest pain and there's only one vessel runoff that the patient was left with. We decided to stop and uh, uh, take the patient off the table uh, for 24 to 48 hours. Actually, in this case, we left the, took the patient off for 48 hours. And we made the decision to bring the patient back to improve outflow and treat the anterior tibial artery. These are the diagnostic images, 48 hours post-procedure. You can see that there is stimuli 3 blood flow. The patient rest pain have resolved completely. In fact, uh, he was complaining of um, uh, some edema and swelling. And this is not unusual in patients with critical limb ischemia and rest pain. Uh, they have significant blood flow that um, uh, overwhelms their venous system. The right of the screen, you can see almost the hint of the anterior tibial artery. Um, and we wanted to to decide and, uh, and see how we're gonna go ahead and treat the anterior tibial artery. So automatically you proceed with accessing the dorsalis pedis artery and the anterior tibial artery in retrograde fashion again, and you can see the first angiogram, you can see the dissection in the proximal anterior tibial artery. Uh, that's probably we noticed on the first case and was probably the reason why we lost the anterior tibial artery in the first place. To the right of the screen, you can see retrograde injection with an, through an 018 catheter that cross from the dorsalis pedis artery to the popliteal artery. Now, what you notice here is the path that this anterior tibial artery is taking is somewhat not direct. And, and, and when, when we were performing the procedure, I was concerned that we were accessing the popliteal artery through a subentimal plane. The same concept that we described earlier in crossing from the SFA to the deep femoral artery, we applied the same concept here. We actually crossed from the anterior tibial artery to the TPT trunk. Remember, we don't want to compromise the hard work that we, uh, uh, we achieved by re-establishing blood flow to the posterior tibial artery. What you notice here in the middle panel is we actually use a snare after we cross from the anterior tibial artery to the TPT and posterior tibial artery. We snared uh, the 014 wire that we used. In this case here, we used an 014 glide advantage made by Turumo um, and essentially pulled it from the TPT trunk uh, into the popliteal artery. This maneuver secures that you have crossed from the anterior tibial artery to the true lumen of a popliteal artery. So I want to show you how we again uh, retrieved the wire uh, through our snare and we advanced the wire uh, into our navicross catheter from the anterior tibial artery. And what you see on the right side of the screen is essentially us performing balloon angioplasty through the popliteal artery into the anterior tibial artery. What's important also to notice is that we had a wire securing our TPT trunk into the posterior tibial artery. These are angiographic pictures and you can clearly see that the flow through the posterior tibial artery TPT trunk is much better than the anterior tibial artery. And clearly that's because of a flow limiting dissection involving the osteum of the anterior tibial artery. We made the decision to proceed with deployment of a drug eluding stent at the osseum of anterior tibial artery. The unique thing about retro uh, tibial access or tibipedal access, we were able to achieve a stent, uh, to, to deploy the stent in a retrograde fashion exactly at the osseum of the takeoff of anterior tibial artery. And what you see to the right upper corner here is uh, the stent being deployed uh, from the anterior tibial artery and uh, a, another drug uh, coated balloon. In, in this case, we're using a Lutonix DCB balloon, 4.0 by 60 millimeters, and performed kissing balloon angioplasty of a takeoff of the anterior tibial artery and the TPT trunk. Final angiographic picture shows brisk uh, blood flow through the anterior tibial artery and the posterior tibial artery, uh, uh, lots of collaterals 
uh, with uh, no stagnant blood flow and to the right of the screen you see the final angiographic result with an intact pedal loop on this patient. I want to point out uh, the, the contrast extravasation that you see of the dorsalis spedis artery. This is normal in patients uh, where you have retrograde tibiopedal access. Usually we remove the hemostasis device for these images because we want to see the flow beyond the access point. Patient um, had a complete pedal loop uh, uh, reconstruction with TM3 blood flow through the anterior tibial artery and the posterior tibial artery. Um, and uh, in fact, about 45 minutes post-procedures, we were able to palpate his posterior tibial artery pulse um, and uh, uh, feel a triphasic Doppler signal in the dorsalis pedis artery. At the end of the case, we would like to thank you for watching our monthly critical limb ischemia presentation. This was a unique case that highlights multiple technical aspects in caring for patients with critical limb ischemia. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this demonstration and we look forward to seeing you in future presentations. Thank you.